sharing with you today for Wellness Wednesday. As you know, I am a licensed professional counselor and I also serve as the leading lady at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Ivor, Virginia. Today we're going to talk about the topic of check your dwelling. So we're going to look at dwelling and what does dwelling mean or to dwell mean. So in looking at this topic one of the things that I wanted to address uh, was where do we live? When we think about dwelling, we think about where do we stay? Where do we reside? And so as I was approaching this topic, one of the things that I did was to define dwelling and dwell. Dwelling as a noun means a shelter where people live and to dwell, which is the verb, it means to live or to stay as a permanent resident. That part really stuck out with me because I really believe that um, in various areas of our lives, we are dwelling or staying in places where we should not dwell. And this can have a negative and, and, and an unhealthy impact on our uh, overall being particularly our mental health. So I'll focus on a few different places where we dwell and how we can replace those unhealthy dwellings or places of being with healthier uh, dwellings. So let's look at some different aspects of dwelling. One of the places we're going to look first is where are you dwelling? Where are you dwelling? Mentally, where is your mind on a regular basis? Do you often let your mind wander? Meaning just let your mind do whatever it wants to do. Do you just kind of find yourself just going off into space sometimes? Do you find yourself just letting a thought that was triggered just kind of carry you in an unhealthy direction? I want to offer today that sometimes some things that we see with regard to anxiety and depression and other mental health challenges can be the result of where our minds are dwelling mentally. Sometimes it's the result of allowing our minds to just wander and not bringing our minds and our thoughts into subjection. The scripture that I want to share in line with this particular piece of where are you dwelling is Isaiah 26 and 3. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is stayed on thee. It's talking about God keeping our minds, keeping us in perfect peace as we keep our minds on him. So the skill that I want to share along with that is thought stopping. When you find your mind going to an unhealthy place, it's your responsibility to check that thought and bring it into subjection. I'm not going to dwell there today. And then replacing it with a healthy thought, which is healthy thought replacement. So it's not just about stopping the unhealthy thought mentally, but it's also about replacing it with a healthier thought so that our minds are not dwelling in spaces that they should not be dwelling mentally. We are dwelling in a healthy space. So I wanna encourage you today to dwell in a healthy mental space. Emotionally, are you controlled by your emotions? And do you respond impulsively to things based on emotional triggers? Scripture that goes along with that is Proverbs 4 and 23. Guard your heart with all diligence. We have to be mindful of what gets into our hearts. Sometimes what's getting into our hearts is a result of what we're taking in through our eyes and through our ears. So we have to be mindful of uh, how we are emotionally triggered by what we see, by what we hear. We have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our minds. If you need to take a break sometimes, take a break. Sometimes we need to uh, put a pause on 
what we're listening to. We need to monitor what are we taking in. Spiritually, do you feel dry? Do you feel like you're in a dry place spiritually? Psalm 16 and 11 says, In his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 91 and 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Where are you dwelling spiritually? How well are you doing with daily devotion? Time where you can spend with God just in worship, just with prayer and scripture and reminding you yourself of what his word says. Dwell in a healthy place spiritually. Physically, how are you taking care of your body? Do you have ailments that could be alleviated or eliminated, period, with how you take care of your physical body? Are you drinking enough water? Are you eating foods that are unhealthy for you to eat on a regular basis day in and day out? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you finding that your sleep is interrupted by insomnia or physical health issues? What are you doing to take good care of your physical body? Something that you can do is to walk, maybe swim or jog, slowly replace unhealthy foods with healthier foods, drink more water, Go outside, look around you. These things can be helpful to you as you take better care of your physical body. Take in some sunlight, take in some oxygen from outside, replenish your body in healthy ways, dwell in a healthy physical place. The second aspect of dwelling I wanna deal with today is who is dwelling with you. So we've already talked about where are you dwelling, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. Who is dwelling with you is the second aspect of dwelling that I want to address today. Think about it. Are there people in your life who are dwelling with you due to misplaced loyalty to them because of who they're supposed to be in the family or who they are supposed to be in the community? Are you dwelling or people dwelling with you because of guilt? Maybe there is something that happened between you and another person. Um, are they dwelling with you due to manipulation? Are they dwelling with you because of something that happened in the past that you all haven't worked through and you feel a sense of obligation to them? Look at your circle. Look at your family. Look at your friends. Everybody was not built to go with you on this journey of life long term. Some people will come, some people will go. And we have to learn how to release those people when it's time to release them. We have to learn who's supposed to be with us long term. What are these people adding to your life? What are these people doing in your space? How are they adding? How are they subtracting? Look at your circle. Here's the thing with who is dwelling. You can't always control who is connected to you because sometimes people are connected to us by blood. Some people are connected to us through our workplace. Sometimes we can't control who is connected, but we can control how we interact with them and how we allow them to interact with us in our space. So that's the second aspect of dwelling. Let's look at the last aspect of dwelling that I want to talk about today. And that is, what is dwelling with you? Is it past mistakes? Is it unforgiveness? Is it bitterness? Is it fear? Is it loneliness? Is it hurt? Today, I wanna to encourage you to make a conscious choice to confront anything that is dwelling with you that should not be dwelling with you. These things will not go away on your their own. We have the saying, or we've heard the saying, that time heals all wounds. But it's not just time. It takes intentional effort to heal. It takes uh, intentionality, honesty, openness, brokenness. <laughs> Sometimes it takes all of that to uh, heal from things that have been dwelling with us, that have been taking up space 
in our lives that they should not be taking up. We have to, if we're going to make room for the things that should be dwelling in our space, confront and resolve these things. We have to make an effort to confront and resolve these things for our mental health, for our mental well-being. We also have to utilize the resources and the tools that we have to us available to us that will help us to heal and release and relieve these things that have been dwelling in our space for so long. Few tools that I'm going to offer today are for sure prayer for healing and release and restoration, but also counseling. Use them hand in hand. Don't think that you can just pray everything away. Some things will go by fasting and prayer, but also in uh, addressing those things with someone who is trained to help you to work through them so that you can release those things from your life and make room for the things that God has for you. Lastly, today I want to remind you that if you have not, please make sure you visit my professional pages, Fran M-A-L-P-C on Instagram and Fran Futrail M-A-L-P-C on Facebook. Make sure you're watching Mental Health Monday on Facebook Live on Mondays at 9 a.m. There you can find helpful tips. And if you haven't uh, already, you can go back and view some videos that could be helpful for you um, as you are learning to take better care of your overall being, starting with your mental health. The name of the book is called Counseling is Not a Cuss Word, and I think that it could be very helpful to you as you are engaging or embarking on this journey of healthier well-being, starting with your mind. So I want to encourage you today, make sure you are addressing where you're dwelling, who's dwelling with you, what's dwelling with you, so that you can exist in a healthy space overall and live the abundant life that God has called you to live. Please remember that your mental health matters. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I pray that these tips are a blessing to you as you're moving forward with your healing. Have a wonderful week. Yeah.